The STS casting system consists of three parts, preparation, application, and removal. Each part has specific steps that must be followed in the exact sequence shown in the video. Once you have mastered the basic technique and are intimately familiar with the application process and properties of the material, slight variations of the process may be made to suit your needs. To begin the molding procedure, position your patient so the foot can be maintained at a 90 degree angle to the leg. In most cases, the patient can hold the foot in this position during the preparation phase. However, for those individuals with a spastic or flaccid paralysis, you may need assistance with one of your staff personnel to hold the foot and leg in this position. Holding the foot in this position during the preparation process will prevent movement of the protective plastic cutting strip and channel tube after they have been applied. Each cutting strip has one end with rounded corners. This end should be placed near the toes. It is important to position this rounded end of the strip exactly one half inch behind the space between the big toe and the second toe. The remainder of the strip is placed over the top of the foot, centered over the ankle joint and directly over the shin bone or tibial crest. Have eight to 10 strips of one inch paper tape, each three inches in length, ready to use. This tape should not be too aggressive so that removal is easy. We recommend 3M's Micropore one inch wide paper tape. With the 24 inch plastic strip held in the correct position, place the first piece of tape directly over the joint line of the ankle. With the strip now anchored, slightly adjust and reposition if necessary, the distal end, so it is one half inch directly behind the first inner space, and tape down this end with the second strip of tape. Next, place the third piece of tape halfway up the leg, aligning the plastic strip over the tibial crest. Finally, tape down the proximal end of the strip to secure it in place. Next, position the 24 inch plastic cutting tube so it is centered directly over the underlying cutting strip and slide it back one half inch so that one half inch of the underlying strip is exposed at the distal end just behind the toes. A small opening in the sock will be cut here later on in the procedure. Tape the tube in place in the exact same manner used to tape down the strip. Try not to apply the tape over the strips already in place. It is imperative that the bag must be used in the preparation process as it prevents the sock resin from getting on the skin. With the foot maintained at 90 degrees to the leg, carefully slip the plastic bag over the foot and lower leg, taking care not to displace the tube and cutting strip. Gloves must be worn when applying the STS socks material because the resin in the material will adhere to the skin. In addition, care should be exercised to prevent the STS sock resin from contacting the patient's skin clothing, and exam table during application. The plastic bags provided with the socks should be of sufficient length to prevent this from happening. Let's now move on to the application process. The pouch should not be opened until you are ready for application, since exposure to air will initiate the curing process. Using the tear notch provided, remove and completely unroll the resin-coated sock. The STS mid-leg sock is a fitted polyester sock with a defined toe and heel portion. A colored stitch line easily identifies the toe end. This color will vary depending on the size of the sock being used. Let the sock dangle downward with the toe end toward the floor and the colored stitch line facing you. This will automatically position the heel of the sock facing away from you. Gently gather up the sock using both hands. Make sure you keep the stitch line oriented toward you. Gather up the sock all the way to the stitch line. During the gathering process, keep the stitch line facing toward you and the heel facing away from you. This will ensure that the heel pocket of the sock is positioned correctly. Be careful not to stretch out the material too much during the gathering process. When the sock is fully gathered, dip the sock in room temperature water and while submerged for 5 to 10 seconds, gently squeeze the sock several times to activate the resin. Remove the sock from the water and gently squeeze out the excess water so it is not dripping wet. Do not squeeze too hard as water is necessary to accelerate the curing process. With the foot still positioned 90 degrees to the leg and the sock gently stretched open, carefully slip it over the toes and over the ends of the tube and strip. Be careful the sock doesn't catch the ends of these items and dislodge them. The colored stitch line should be centered on top of all the toes and span evenly across the toes from medially to laterally. This will also assure the heel pocket is properly oriented. After correctly positioning the gathered sock, continue gently and carefully pulling the sock over the foot, around the heel, and up the leg. It is important that as you pull the sock proximally, you gently stretch out all wrinkles as the sock leaves your fingertips. 
it will be difficult if not impossible to stretch out wrinkles after the sock is completely in place do not use too much force in pulling the sock as this may contract the toes and deform the foot Make sure the entire length of the sock is stretched out and there is no overlapping of material at the proximal open end. The sock should be of uniform thickness along its entire length. When the sock is fully in place and all the wrinkles are stretched out, address your attention to the distal or toe end of the tube. Use palpation to identify this point. Then, using a pair of STS scissors or similar device, make a tiny cut in the material to create a starter hole used in the removal process. Shortly after applying the sock, the resin will begin to foam. During the foaming process, the resin must be worked into the underlying fabric to achieve a strong, smooth mold. This is done by massaging and rubbing the resin into the fabric until the foaming stops. Here is the process. After making the scissor cut, immediately dip your gloves in water and commence massaging and rubbing the sock resin into the fabric. Always work from distal, the toe end, to proximal, the open end. If the resin begins to feel sticky or tacky, it means more water is needed on the surface. Use a fine mist spray bottle to spray a thin film of water over the entire surface of the sock, front, back, bottom, and sides. Continue wetting your gloves and or spraying the sock surface until the entire sock feels slippery during the molding and massaging process. Keep in mind that, unlike plaster, it is impossible to use too much water with the SDS sock. Water will not thin out or weaken the resin so when in doubt, add more water. During the molding process, pay particular attention to molding the channel tube, arch, instep, and ankle anatomy to carefully define these areas. Once the foaming stops, the foot can be positioned before the cast actually hardens. The final position of foot placement depends on what device the cast will be used to fabricate, footwear, skates, or an ankle foot orthosis. For those products that need the foot in neutral suspension, Simply hold the foot in that position as you would if casting for functional orthotic devices. Some fabricators require the distal tip of the malleoli be marked. Use a felt tip pen to accomplish this. If a weight bearing or semi weight bearing cast is desired, place the patient's foot on a casting platform or casting pad of soft foam covered by a sheet of plastic wrap such as saran wrap. The plastic wrap will prevent the resin from sticking to its underlying support. When the mold is completely rigid and is no longer tacky, it is ready for removal. When satisfied that the cast resin is fully cured, use care in removing the channel tube. Make sure the underlying cutting strip is held in place during the removal process and not inadvertently pulled out with the tube. Using a gentle, sustained pulling motion in the direction of the patella, the tube will suddenly be released from its hold down tape strips. Removal of the tube will create a channel which facilitates the removal process. Using the STS or similar small removal scissors, place the lower jaw of the scissors in the small opening previously created at the distal end of the channel tube. Position yourself in front of the patient and working toward the ankle, cut through the sock material, making sure you also cut through the plastic bag. Cut proximally up the full length of the sock, keeping the scissors in the center of the channel. Cut the entire length of the sock exiting at its upper margin. Use a slight upward pressure on the scissors, keeping them away from the underlying strip as you cut the length of the sock along the channel through the proximal margin of the mold. Next, reversing direction, cut from the starter hole to the colored stitch line between the first and second toe, again gently elevating the sock material away from the skin as you make the cut. Check the cut line to make sure the underlying bag has been cut through its entire length. If sections of the bag were not cut, complete these cuts before proceeding. You will need a continuous, unobstructed opening to remove the cast. Gently spread open the mold with your thumbs and remove it from the patient's foot by rotating it around the heel. Depending on preference, tuck the plastic bag inside the mold or carefully remove it. Rubber bands are used to hold the cut margins together after they are aligned. Gently stuff the opening with newspaper. The mold is now ready for immediate shipping. Finished molds made from the STS sock material can be used as a positive or a negative mold. Also, the glass smooth, uniform thickness of the surface material is ideal for scanning purposes. Unlike plaster, the mold can be reused over and over again. The molds are also durable, yet very lightweight for shipping. The finished mold replicates the shape of the patient's foot, ankle, and leg extremely well. There is no messy cleanup on the patient, furniture, floor, or clothing. Thus, this process can be done anywhere outside of the office or clinic setting. 
For additional information regarding this product or any other STS casting products, contact customer service at 800-787-9097 or go to our website at www.stssocks.com.